exploration on your own, and we're going to find out from you what you learned in the process. But before we get started, I'd like each of the panelists to introduce themselves. Kathy Sexton, Productivity Experts. Hi, I'm Will, Red Canoe Media. <laughs> I'm Brian Rogers, Blue Maven Law Business Attorney. Okay, so here's the question for you to consider today. And you can decide to work on this individually, or you can work on, as a group at your table, whatever you want to do, but you're going to have two minutes to answer this question. Over the years, there have been just countless numbers of books and programs that have been developed on time management. Given this vast array of knowledge, why is it that we still feel the pressure of time. You've got two minutes. Okay, thank you. Let's come back together again. Yeah, if we can, come back together again, please. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, now in true contrarian fashion, we're going to start with the audience instead of the panel. So, <laughs> what did you discover? What kind of answer did you come up with to the question? Anybody? Thad? <laughs> He's so cute, isn't he? Yeah. So for me, uh, after hearing Jill Farmer, which many of you know is all about time, uh, I think we put the pressure on ourselves many times, and it's our own boundaries that we limit. So back to the mindfulness thing, and, and you, she states that you have more than enough time to get everything done that you want to do. Okay, good, good. Thad? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I thought you, I said Thad would take care of it. That's right, absolutely. Uh, uh, we we kind of came to the there's conclusion. There's lost time, yeah. <laughs> um, that the technology that's supposed to be helping us manage our time is actually creating more stresses for us to react immediately to every uh, situation that comes our way. Okay. So our focus on time is creating the problem for us. Good. Other ideas, other suggestions? Tracy? Uh, so we had lots of ideas. One was, um, and I'm going to, this is her idea, uh, important. Um, is a box, important and urgent, but then there's also the box, urgent and important. So prioritizing and figuring out what has to get done and not dwelling on all the things you know need to get done, but yeah. prioritizing. Okay, so we can alleviate a part of that if we just prioritize a little more effectively and are more conscious about that. Other thoughts? Bill? Jim and I were talking about two things. One was just uh, clearly just not organizing things, just not being organized enough. And the other thing is um, it, it seems as though people tend to want to do everything to, to such a degree of excellence. And so they're trying to do things so excellently that it creates even more stress. And so making conscious decisions about how well things need to be done. So going for good enough. Yeah, is it good right, enough? Good yes. enough. What, what yep. can produce a result with the least amount of effort? Very good. Other thoughts, ideas, suggestions? I also think to go along with that, that um, there's a kind of a social pressure in our culture, at least, to please everybody. And people are kind of afraid to disappoint people. And so if we don't if we don't answer a call or answer a text or answer a Facebook message or whatever right now, we're, I mean, a lot of people are afraid that they're going to upset the person who's trying to reach us. Okay. And so there's an urgency that's embedded in our social construct that, um, that we don't want to upset others. And that, that plays into the, the perfectionism. Excuse me for right. that. Um, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting insight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just along with that is learning to say no you had to learn to say no right. because i was right. a yes let me please you let me join everything let me get to meet everybody can't do that anymore i had to like talk to myself ask myself the question is this going to be good for my growth 
it's going to be good for yeah. the other person. And you just can say yes or no to that and don't feel bad. Very good. Bill. Uh, one one uh, strategy that I use uh, sometimes is uh, simply to say, to start with, it sounds flip to say this, but the universe is never late. Uh -huh. And to the extent you can put the situation into a larger frame, a larger picture, enlarge the frame, then uh, it seems to take off the pressure of time. Okay, great, great. A any other, uh, Andy? One other thing is knowing what's important to yourself, because so often we go, oh, I've got to get it done because, instead of going, is this bringing me joy? Is this, uh -huh. serve, is it, it, you know, what do I want? How many people don't really know the answer to that question? Yeah, giving more serious consideration to what we want out of it and making decisions and choices on that basis. Very good. Any others? I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity if they have something they want to share. If not, then we're going to turn to our panel, and because Kathy is the productivity expert, we're going to leave her to the last on the panel. So I, I think there's just more stuff to do than we could possibly do as a small business owner, especially as a solo practitioner. There are a multitude of you know, times more things that I feel like I should be doing and I want to do than I could possibly do. So you know, prioritizing is, is, is important. But um, you know, no matter how good you are at actually getting things done, there's just many more times of that in, you know, in the queue. So as we get better, we just do more and we take more of things that maybe we wouldn't have done before that, w that we had to do. So there's always more work to fill in that gap. So, And also another uh, thing uh, that, that happens, I think, is that <clears throat> um, we get uh, just more efficient at, at doing stuff in general. As an example, as a business lawyer, one of the things I do is uh, write contracts. So back when the you know, uh, uh, quill pen... Um, you know, it takes a long time to write that contract. So in one day, if I got one done, I probably would have been happy back then. And now there's, you know, document assembly soft software that you program the stuff in there, and it just creates contracts as fast as you can push a button. And so we just, you know, technologically, we, we just actually can do more than uh, we could in the past. Karen, this is touch number 923 for the day. <laughs> I wrote it down, or well, typed it down, right? Uh, one thing that I thought was funny about the question was the fact that I have a hard time finishing said books in the first place because of the time crunch. Uh, but I, I have been told, or I've been given two books by Bill, and they were kind of reflected in what everybody said today. One was The Tyranny of the Urgent, uh, which is, is exactly what I think somebody said about uh, urgency and uh, the other book is um, The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. And that was all about prioritizing things and not taking on those monkeys when you can delegate that kind of stuff. It all comes down to really prioritizing your time. So it's interesting that I'm referring to two books when I can't finish any books. <laughs> well, where do we begin? <laughs> Um, I do have a book out <laughs> that might help. Um, I guess my statement is the lies we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves we have to get all this stuff done. We, you know, we tell ourselves that, as someone said, you know, oh, they're not going to like us. Perfect example. Yesterday I had a client call me and said, you know, we're opening this new store and I don't have my swipe yet for my credit card. What am I going to do? I, you know, should I just not take credit cards? And I said, no, you ask them for their information and you put it in the, you mean they would, <laughs> they would, they'll allow me to do, you know, she didn't say allow me to do that, but I said, it'll be fine. They'll wait. They expect you to ask them questions. Oh, wow. And it just, you know, the pressures that we put on ourselves, we tell ourselves that we can't be done or that we have so much. But you all had such amazing answers because it is all about our mindfulness. It's about what the pressures we put on ourselves. It's about we put on our to-do list. Your inbox is going to be full when you die, so it's not, you know, where we have to be focused, right? It is about 
what's important, what you want to accomplish, and, and do it in a way that's not stressful. Well, great ideas, one and all. Uh, in my opinion, and my thought is that we're managing the wrong resource. We're managing time. And I think that if we managed energy instead of time, we would find we have more than enough time to accomplish anything. In my particular case, my mind wakes up very quickly, my body about two hours later. <laughs> so, you know, if I try to exercise first thing in the morning, you know, my body's going, what in the world do you think you're doing? You know? So my mind's very active. So in the morning, when I first get up, is when I do all the creative stuff. And somewhere around 10 o'clock in the morning, 10, 11, you know, that creative energy is exhausted, and that's when I go do the bookkeeping and stuff like that that don't require a lot of thought in order to accomplish it. And somewhere around 3 in the afternoon is when I hit the wall, and that's when I go and do my exercise then, and it rejuvenates me, gets the blood flowing again, and it keeps me going. Now, I accomplish a great deal in any given day because I'm managing my energy. I'm not managing the time. I don't care how much time. I don't have a deadline on time for accomplishing a certain thing. I have times in which I do certain activities because that's when I'm going to accomplish the most within that time frame. So I think managing the energy is a lot more significant than managing time and a lot more effective. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Let's give our panel a round of applause.